What's up everybody? As you saw by the opening clips of this video and the title, today we're gonna do a little welder side-by-side -side comparison action. I recently had to purchase a new welder because my Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200, the board died in it again. And this is the second time that that has happened. This time it's out of warranty and it was gonna cost more to fix it than what I could buy a brand new welder for. I ended up going with an Everlast TIG 200, which was a recommendation to me by the boys over at Tin Soldier Race Cars. Those guys weld every single day. They have a couple of these machines with a couple more on order, and they tell me that they are a really good bang for the buck. So let's jump over to these welders and see which one is the best and which one is the most budget friendly, which one's gonna last the longest. We've got our Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200 on the right. We've got our Everlast Power TIG 200 on the left. Right off the get-go, we can tell that the Everlast is a physically larger welder than the Lincoln. Both of these welders are designed to be portable, so you can carry them on the go. The Everlast welder comes in at a little bit more weight. It's 56 pounds compared to the Lincoln welder, which is 46 pounds. So this Everlast is a solid 10 pounds heavier, and it's a little bit physically larger. Both units have a 60% duty cycle. They're both 200 amp capable with five amp start and DC mode. They both run on 120 or 240. They're an AC, DC, TIG or stick. Specifically, we're gonna talk about the TIG functions today because I don't really do anything stick related. And the retail cost is where these things differ the most. The Lincoln over here is a $2,400 welder. This Everlast welder is $1,179, and that includes free shipping. So the Lincoln is about twice the cost of this Everlast over here. Diving into these a little bit more than just the physical appearance here, we can see some differences right off the get-go. The Lincoln is a much simpler looking welder. It's a lot less intimidating than the Everlast over here. The Everlast has a lot of different functions with all of the pre and post gas flow. You can not only change the pulse frequency, but you can change the pulse amps, and you can change the time that the pulse is on. With the Lincoln, you can change the pulse and you can change the time, but you can't get quite as in depth as you can with the Everlast welder. With the Lincoln, there's also no way of controlling pre and post gas flow. So depending on what you are or aren't welding, the Everlast might have it beat in that department. Both welders are similar in the way that the leads attach. You've got your TIG on this side, TIG on this side, stick, stick, and then your foot pedal control and your foot pedal control. Where the Everlast differs though is the gas flow is actually not made into the lead for the torch like the Lincoln is. So there's a separate line that you have to hook up. I don't really know why they did it like that. Uh, I would assume it's probably for cost reasons, but I would say that uh, for simplicity reasons, the Lincoln has, has it beat in that department. So now that we kind of have a generalized look at these two welders. Let's look at their components and see how all of the components that go along with these welders compare. So I'll start with the foot pedals. Both of the foot pedals on the Lincoln and the Everlast look pretty much identical to me. They look like they're probably made by the exact same manufacturer. Unfortunately, they're not directly comparable as far as they don't both plug in with the same size plug, which that kind of sucks because I was kind of hoping to have a spare pedal, but as far as from a quality standpoint, those things look identical. Moving into the grounds, I like the style of ground clamp on the Everlast because the Lincoln has the copper wire on the inside, and as you can see, before I've gotten it on whatever I was welding on and it wants to arc out and weld itself to that strapping wire. So I do like this Everlast clamp better. What I don't like is this hose clamp deal here. That seems pretty cheesy to me, and I foresee myself having issues with that as to where the Lincoln one was a nice crimped in and bolted on. So this is probably gonna give me problems, and I never really had any problems with that other than my own fault of welding that. And then the TIG torches, 
Uh, the torches are very similar. My Lincoln torch here is smaller in diameter. The Everlast torch has a larger handle on it. Uh, personally, I like that. I felt like this was a little bit small. Uh, maybe somebody with small hands or a woman would prefer this style, but I like the idea of having a little bit larger handle here. The one thing that is pretty cool that this came with that I actually didn't know it came with is uh, basically a foot pedal that can be thumb operated. Uh, this would be really nice for doing like roll cage work or welding underneath a chassis where you're in a tight spot that you can't necessarily get your foot to the foot pedal and you'll be able to control your welding with this little thumb pad. So that will be nice. Uh, the Wiring, as far as going from uh, 120 to 240, I really like my Lincoln a lot better. The Lincoln, you simply just plug this into the back of the machine if you wanted it to run it on 110, and you just unplug that and swap it out for the 220 plug. On this one, it's got the 220 hardwired in, so you have a long five or six foot cable that you've got to deal with all the time, and then when you want to change it down to 110, you have to plug this in. That makes it a lot more of a pain, in my opinion, for this welder to be portable, because you can't take everything off of it. You've always got a tail of a cord that you're dragging around. As to where the Lincoln, you can take everything fully off of it, so it's 100% just moving this unit. So there's a rundown on both of those units. Now the Lincoln welder has a three year warranty that you can buy an additional extended warranty to take it to five years. The Everlast welder comes standard with a five year warranty. Just comparing the two side by side, being completely unbiased as possible, uh, there's things about both that I like more than the other. The thing that I like about the Lincoln is it's a lot more user friendly. It, it's a lot less intimidating. It has less functions, but it's something that I feel like anybody could go out and grab uh, and feel like they could confidently learn off of it. The Everlast having more functions will make it a better welder for somebody like me who's been welding for a long time. If it's gonna give me more options, probably gonna make me be able to produce a better weld, but it is, the drawback is that it is more complicated, it is more intimidating, so I could see that scaring some people away from it. I don't like some of the uh, unnecessary attachments, how the gas flow on the Everlast has to be separate from the lead. Uh, I don't really understand that 100%. But other than that, you know, really, the, the two welders are pretty comparable. I don't like that it's 10 extra pounds. I don't like that it's a little bit bulkier. It, I do take the thing mobile with me. Uh, if we're going to go race for a, a long weekend or a big event, uh, I like to be able to take my Lincoln welder with me. I like to be able to take it from here to the shop, to my dad's. I like to do a lot of different things with it and this one's going to be a little bit more of a pain than what my Lincoln was. The reason that I did not go back with the Lincoln besides the cost uh, is mainly because of those two board failures. I do not weld every day. I probably weld realistically once a week for maybe a couple hours. Uh, that, in my opinion, is not enough time welding for a welder to have the board fail in it twice in just over a four year period. The Everlast welder that Jason at Tin Soldier Race Cars recommended to me, he has had one since before they started their business and they've been in business for eight years and he's never ever had a problem with it. Uh, he actually said that he ran over one of the gas lines one time and they sent him a new one for free, even though he told him that it was his fault. So they also had a Lincoln Square Wave TIG 200 that the board went out in it twice and they got rid of it shortly after. So honestly, I wish that the Lincoln was more reliable because I probably, after seeing both of these, probably would have went back with the Lincoln. Uh, I'm looking forward to using the Everlast and I think that it will produce a little bit better quality weld than what I was able to do with the Lincoln just because of all of the different settings. But I do like the Lincoln. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just not willing to gamble on those problems. And if you Google search it, you'll find all kinds of people having problems with Square Wave. So hopefully this Everlast is the good bang for the buck. Time will tell, 
uh, but we don't have five or eight years to leave this video on record for until we figure it out. <laughs> but first impressions, uh, overall pretty happy with the Everlast and I can see why guys recommend it. And so far I'd probably recommend it to you guys as well. If you like this type of stuff, if you like when I do more of these product review type things, drop a comment below, like the video, helps me get it out there to more people. And like always guys, we'll see you next time.